Hi y'all, I'm Arwen of Tarot by Arwen, and I like doing video reviews, and I wanted to do one for a deck that's hard to find out of print in the black and white version. You can still get copies of it in the color version. Um, it's an old deck, and I want to read to you off the box. You'll see the box is just beat to heck and back, right? But it has order instructions on it, and I thought you'd find this fun. The book and deck can be ordered separately or as a set directly from the publisher. Send $9.95 plus $1.25 postage for the book. Really? Less than $15 including postage? Wow! Uh, $21 plus $2 if you want just the deck or $30.95 plus $2.50 if you want everything. So the shipping prices back then were pretty fabulous. I say back then it was originally printed in 1984 um, and I believe this is the 1990 version that I have. Some of the, the differences about this deck, one, it's round, that's one. It's done as a lesbian feminist deck. It is all artwork visioned and designed by Fiona Morgan. That's going to tell some of you exactly what this deck is. And there were one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen women who participated in creating this. The original creation was known as the Matriarchal Tarot, and it was by Fiona Morgan and Shakina Mountainwater. Uh, Shakina crossed the veil a few years ago. Uh, she was an amazing woman. If you ever got to meet her, and I was very lucky to have had the chance to meet her one time and participate in a workshop with her, her presence was... Uh, but I want to talk to you a little bit about this deck. It's Daughters of the Moon. Uh, you can Google Daughters of the Moon Tarot and find the publisher's website and still order these decks from Fiona. One of the interesting things, because it's a deck designed for women by women and it's a lesbian design deck, there are two lover's cards. One is definitely lesbians. You can see them. Two women embracing. Kind of under C. Sorry about the angle of the cards. One of the hard things about reading with a round deck, you don't have reversals as much as you have less important, more important, tilty kind of things. Um, and then the other lover's card, also underwater, also for Aphrodite, it's more androgynous. That top figure could be a male, it could be a woman. The fronds are hiding the, you know, the naughty bits. Unlike the erotic tarot, which I also did a video of. <gasps> I did that a lot in that video. And this is a black and white deck. Uh, it was originally, a lot of people bought it to color in themselves. That goes back to the Bota deck, uh, builders of the, uh, the word just escaped me, Edidum? Edidum? <laughs> right. I'm a tarot reader and I cannot remember the name of that deck. But it's the Bota deck. And it was originally done so that people who were studying it learned the colors and the symbols, and they colored. So, we have Mott for Justice. And again, you're going to see some very different styles in here. Um, this very much captures the Egyptian. But what I love, let me see if I can get her up there close enough. She's an older woman, and she's definitely black or Egyptian dark. She's not a white woman. One of the first decks that really went outside of the everybody's white range, and that's a real important thing I think about this deck. Um, they don't stray away from, uh, they don't shy away from the hard stuff. Here's the tower which they've renamed Oppression. I'm going to hold it up. The important thing here, you see all the buildings, I'm sorry, Kali is um, I believe this is actually the devil. My bad. But look here. You see all those stones? There's somebody under them. And there's faces. This is representing the stoning of um, witches. Now, if you're a real student of history, you know that the burning times were not probably as large as has been purported. Uh, some of those within my faith, I'm Wiccan, May have gone a little overboard, but it was bad, and people did die because of what they believed and what they owned. That was a big part of it. We have a beautiful card here in the Phoenix. 
I do have the colored version of these cards as well. But isn't she gorgeous? Her hair, her wings, everything, all the fire in this. Really love this. Um, I'm just flipping through here. I picked out some cards I wanted to show you. Strength, pretty typical strength, except it's more of a companionship than an ownership here. She is um, hunting with the lion as her companion and her friend. And hunting in the all together. So, ooh. We have, here's the tower. I knew that Kali was the tower. But she's, the tower here is the Awakener. Really interesting for the tower, right? Because uh, the tower is what happens when lies we tell ourselves come crumbling down and wash out. This is that piece of the tower that not a lot of us really pay attention to, want to pay attention to. I mean, let's admit it. It's no fun being told that um, you're believing in your own lies. So... Now this card, this card I love. It's the world, but it's a very different world. It's, it's Mawu. Mawu is an African goddess who is said to have given birth to the world on an elephant. And that's pretty much what's happening here. Birth on an elephant. Right there in front of you. Giving birth. She's unattended. She's doing it herself. Um, and look at the snake there. The snake there watching, waiting, seeing if it can tempt. So a little bit of a Christian iconic uh iconography again words i'm not really sure about um i love this card the hermit but it's the wise one some of these cards you can kind of go astray you, you know somebody else might say well that's the star and maybe so um i always see the wise one as the hermit this is baba yaga uh russian folk goddess uh not a I, Mythology is somebody else's religion, so you can always, you'll know what this one is. It's called Reversal. Pretty obvious what it is, though, right? What I really like about here is that it shows the enlightenment that's happening as this person is turned upside down. This woman is upside down. And I really think that somebody modeled for this, because even her boobs are in the right way. Yeah, I look, didn't you? Really? Easy, again to guess. This is done by Rainbow. I wrote, it's one of my favorite ones. I had to look who, to see who did it. The Amazon. Dun, dun, dun. Now, in this Daughters of the Moon, look at her moon-shaped shield. The moon's very, very um, powerful in this deck because, of course, the moon is feminine to many. And if you're in the right culture, some cultures, it's a masculine moon. Oh. Um, now, they don't do four courts. They do Maiden Mother Crone. So I've got here for you, we'll start with the Maiden. Maiden of Cups. And they give you Mami Watu. Mami Watu. There's a chant that uses her name. Uh, as the Mermaid and the Maiden of Cups. And they assign her to Pisces. Again, lots of symbology going on here. Her hair, the mirror, the fish. The bird is a messenger. Then we go to the mother. And again, I've had cups. This is Namu. Namu is also, I believe, a whale goddess. I haven't researched her lately, so I could be wrong. But there are definitely whales and porpoises in this card. So here is Namu. And she is the mother of cups. Full-breasted, definitely nurturing, and she is the carrot card of cancer. And then we move to the Corone of Cups, who is Scorpio. Now, this is a darker one, but again, look at the face of the woman. And look at all the snakes in this card. And meet Hecate. Hecate is one of my um, very favorite goddesses. I call her Grandmother Death. She is the goddess of the crossroads. And it's very, it makes good sense to me for her to be a, a Scorpio card. Scorpio is the uh, astrological sign that is considered transformational, is considered attached to the concept of death in, in moving from one life to another. Scorpios are very um, 
in that energy, if you will. I'm going to show you also the Crone of Flames, Caradwen. Very transformational again. You see all the animals on her. I'm sorry about the shaking, y'all. But here's what I want you to look at. Okay, I'm going to try to hold this still. Look at her head. And you see the eagle coming out? Oh my God, could I shake any harder? And then we've got the doe, the otter. These were all in the, and even the chicken. The tale of Caradwen talks about her taking a young boy and, oh, what was his name, Gwydion, Gwydion, and setting him to stir a pot. This pot was going to be, it had to cook down to one drop. That drop was going to contain the entire knowledge of the world. And she was going to give it to her own child. Well, boys being boys, he wasn't paying attention. He spilled some on his finger, put his finger in his mouth. And suddenly he realized he got all this knowledge. Part of that was Carradine was going to knock him. He's dead once she got down what she needed. So he transformed himself into several creatures, and she transferred herself into something that would chase them, right? So there's this long tale of Caradron chasing, chasing Gwydion. Gwydion turns himself into a seed. She turns herself into a hen and eats them all. Then she transforms back, and lo and behold, she's pregnant. And she gives birth to Taliesin. I believe I've got the tale right. I could be screwing this up. I haven't looked at this in a while. And that's where you get Talies and the Great Bard of Celtic Tales. Let's look at a couple in the lower suits, the lower suits, the minor arcana. And I've got pentacles, cups, flames, and, and pentacles. I didn't get a, a knife out. Oh, here we go. There's one waiting for me right there, so we'll use it. And it is the blade, five of blades. Generally a strife card, a card of strife and struggle. And here we have a hurricane. Very good for a five of blades. Interesting that you would have water associated with that. But if you've ever been around or seen the destruction of a hurricane, you'll understand. Here's the pentacles. And I love the pentacles. This is a six of pentacles. It's the card of generosity and sharing and look at this it's a race and these women are in wheelchairs now how do you know this is a lesbian deck number 13 not shaving okay hey everybody does what they like we go to the two of flames of uh the wands here are flames interesting they do pentacles cups knives and then go elemental instead of going to wands i don't know if it's because it's so masculine and oh the one ace of wands is a penis sorry i might even say vagina but don't tell anybody because apparently that's a bad word in some schools um this is mahue mahue is the two of flames she is definitely a pacific islander and god bless i love her I used to date somebody who looked a lot like her. Maybe she rests in peace. She's dead now. She was a wonderful woman. But look at her hands. She is a goddess of creation and making things happen. I'm trying to hold my arm still. But that's Mahue. And this was done by... She didn't sign her name to this one or I can't find her little thing. Now, I'm almost at 15 minutes, so I need to cut this short. Six of Cups, Compassion, Healing, Sisters Gathering Up Around Somebody Else, and All the Cups in the Water. It's a beautiful, beautiful card. This is a beautiful deck. Um, if you can get your hands on one, do. They can be a little pricey. Um, you know, that's totally up to you as to what you want. Uh, this is what the old box used to look like, so... You can see it's just kind of very plain. Um, I, the, the tops come off of this because it's been around so long. 
but like I said, I do have uh, versions of the colored version, and I think I have another black and white lurking somewhere. I still need to do all of my tarot cards and find out what I have and what I don't have. Thanks so much for joining me for this review of the Daughters of the Moon Tarot. I am Arwen Lynch. You can find me online at tarotbyarwen.com. Seek joy, y'all. Have a great day.